Thank you for listening to Christ Alone Podcast, where we believe that Jesus lived, died, and resurrected according to the scriptures. Our hope is that God can bless you through this week's episode. Hey, question. Are Back to the Future and The Breakfast Club in your top 10 movies? Does the mention of Van Halen or even Millie Vanilli make your foot start tapping? Well, I have a podcast just for you. Renewed Mindsets, the show designed for Gen X believers just like you who might have missed some crucial teachings while navigating family and career life. I'm here every week to bring you a dose of wisdom for your walk with God, all delivered in an informal and sometimes humorous way. Our episodes are short enough for your daily mute but never short on truth check us out at renewedmindsets.com even at our age we can all use a renewed mind catch you on the next episode see ya all right welcome back you're listening to angie and steven's podcast crass alone crass alone podcast Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for joining us again. I know it's been a minute. It's been a while. We took a little break, and then uh, we did an episode, and then seems like we took another break. There's uh, there's some things going on in the background that, uh, you know, uh, I guess are just part of my life that um, I'm just uh, a little out of focus, maybe. So I do covet your prayers if you're listening. Also, my sister moved away. And so, you know. I covet your a... prayers also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she covets your prayers. Uh, but, you know, there's a transition of her moving away and getting settled. And then, you know, we we decided on maybe a new recording schedule. There's a lot of little things that have, I guess, gotten in the way. Um yeah, I've also personally, I've just been a little bit discouraged, but, you know, I'm, you know, resting in the Lord and, you know, praying and, you know, that asking the Lord to, you know, restore me, to fill me with his joy. Life just happens, you know, life just happens. And sometimes I think when we're going through some stuff, it almost feels time stops, even though it doesn't, it almost feels like you know, yeah. within ourselves, like time just stops. And uh, almost like you take a deep breath and it's like you're holding in that breath for that right. time. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Like and it's like you almost want everybody in a sense like I, I don't want to say that like you're hoping that everybody's going through the same thing, but you're almost like in a sense. I guess, yeah, just hoping that that people stop with you. <laughs> right. Right. And that doesn't happen. And so, you know, from, you know, personally, I just, I don't want to burden anybody with anything either. And, you know, maybe that's a pride thing that I need to pray about, but, but, you know, um, something that's been helping me out a lot are the spaces on, on X, on Twitter. They're very encouraging because I'm just consuming the Lord's word, you know, almost on a daily basis while I'm at work. Um, you know, and sometimes that they happen on the weekend or sometimes in the evening, at night, through the night. It seems like there's always a space, no matter what time of the day it is. Um, there's always a space open because there's so many people that share the same spaces in Twitter that live in different parts of the world. So while we may be getting ready for bed on the East Coast, you know, somebody on the other side of the world is just waking up or, or, you know, or, or having an early, early morning and then continuing the space there. And so, you know, we'll jump from space to space to continue fellowship. And that's a wonderful thing. That's, that's really one of the things that has kept me encouraged and kept me from like, I think sometimes when we go through stuff, you know, we just fall into meditating on that on that awfulness that we might be going through or on that on that problem and you know and we sometimes in our humanity think that we have to try and solve it ourselves and and we forget about the dependency on God and you know that that it's that it's already done it's all it's already finished there's there's nothing that that we can do and and again, that's not to discourage anybody from doing your your due diligence and your part in terms of responsibility. 
for, you know, some things that you may need to resolve. But I think sometimes when we're down, the enemy uses that opportunity to kick us while we're down. And we forget that all we have to do is cry out to our Lord to pull us up and out and, you know, give us a joy that surpasses all understanding. And so, of course, this is not the subject (laughs) of today's episode. It's Uh, important, though, because I I feel like we all go through difficult times. Um, Something that uh, verse that has been just coming up a lot for me is Philippians 4, where it talks about do not be anxious about anything, but in everything with prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to the Lord and the peace of God will fill your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And it's just, and then the, that uh, that surpasses all understanding. Right. Like it doesn't make sense for you to have peace right now, but to know that no matter what God loves you and God's there for you, that's, that's, uh, that's big. It it says something. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing about mine and why I won't get into specifics is because, you know, this could be something that is definitely in one way or another going to glorify God in the end. Right. But, uh, you know, it's, it's going to, I feel like it is going to be a testimony one way or another, however this turns out. And so, um, again, I, I just, you know, we covet your prayers as individuals, also as a team on the podcast, you know, we pray that, you know, or we hope that you guys, that you pray for us, you know, so that God can give us wisdom and understanding and vision for this podcast and this ministry. So we do appreciate the support that we do get from those listeners that are out there. And so again, thank you. Thank you. And um, that's it. I guess today we just wanted to talk about just kind of maybe do like a little recap, you know, uh, how how this podcast started, where, you know, where we were, where we're at, where we might want to go. Um, there's, there's like no script here, but it is, we have this month hit our four year anniversary. So, you know, congratulations to you counselor for sticking with this for four years. Praise the Lord. I can't believe it's been four years. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And I so thought we for, started in, did we not start in March? No. Or we started talking I, I, about it in March. It, it, I think it was more along the lines of May because I, I feel like this all just came together very quickly, right? And we're, we're right. going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, but basically, all right, so basically what happened was I had I was doing a podcast with my daughter who was 12 at the time, now about to be 17. It's not that um, <laughs> Yeah. Uh so she was like 12 at the time and so she uh we started a podcast, uh Like Father Like Daughter podcast. It was and during COVID, right? It was during COVID. Yeah, we we start actually that's what it was. I started that podcast like in March. And then, like in May, June is when we started maybe talking about it. And by by July, was we had our first episode. I just know our first episode was recorded like the first or second week of July. I don't remember. Uh, but anyways, so so you know, I was doing that podcast with her. I was enjoying it, and so I thought, man, no, I'm sorry, I take that back. I hadn't thought about doing another podcast. I had a dream that I started a second podcast. And that it was for veterans, right? And so in that dream, it was a buddy of mine who's also a veteran. So I called him the next day and I was like, hey, man, I had this dream. You were in it. He also had a podcast. And I was like, look, and we start, we, we started the second podcast together and it was to help veterans, this and that. And he's like, man, that sounds like a, like a good idea. He's like, but right now, you know, I I can't because I need to focus on my podcast. And so he had like a couple months to a year, maybe, maybe closer to a year ahead of, of me in in podcasting experience. And so I was like, all right, I get it. You know, I understand. But you know, I just didn't think nothing of it after that. I thought, man, I had that dream. I I thought maybe that's what that dream meant that I needed to start a, a second podcast about veterans. Then you call me that very same day, maybe maybe minutes after, 
and we're just talking and you have no idea what what you know has just happened you don't have no idea about my dream or anything but we just started talking about spirituality and we had probably a 30 minute conversation about spirituality right and at the end of it you said you know we should do a podcast about it and as soon as you said that all right i think you hadn't yeah you even mentioned anything about your conversation mm-hmm. with uh your friend no, not at all. And so when you said that, my light bulb went off and I was like, all right, let's do it. Yeah. Right. And then the next day I had a logo. I had a You website. were ready. I said I it, have... listen, I said it joking. I apologize. Sorry. I apologize for the noise here. I, I'm, I'm dog. I was going to say babysitting. I'm dog sitting. So you hear some noise in the background. It's, uh, oh. it's Freda. <laughs> So okay. I apologize for that. But yeah, I remember, I, I think I said it jokingly when I said it. And you just went for it full yeah, it's like a- full gear. And you're like, yes, let's do this. I had a dream. This is happening. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so um, I don't know if it was after the fact that, you know, that I told you that I had this dream. And, and, and that was just, to me, that was a revelation. It was like, all right, this is. This is probably where God wants me to go. And and here's the interesting part. When I started the podcast with my daughter, that March is when I had that experience with the Lord. He shook me internally in my spirit. And it felt to me like God was telling me, this is the last time I'm getting your attention because I'm coming back soon. You know, like, get it together. This is it. And then right after that experience, then COVID just broke out all over the U.S. Um, and so, yeah, so so from there, it was like, all right. And I just, you know, I've stuck with the Lord ever since, completely changed my life. And so that that's pretty much it from my perspective. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, here we are four years later. Yeah. I remember you telling me, too. You're like, wait a second. Like, after we had already, like, launched the podcast, I remember you saying, wait, what if we run out of things to talk about? Yeah. Do you remember that? What yeah. What if we run out of things to talk about? And here we are, four years later. Still talking. Still talking about the Lord. Still yeah, you encouraging can't... people to come to the Lord. Yeah, you can't really run out of things to talk about. No. Um, you know, I, it's incredible. I mean, we've we've got how many verses? I don't even know the number, but... We've got 66 books that we can go through. Yeah. And I think I think a lot of the times, you know, when you study scripture, it the theme may seem repetitive and in the, in a sense it is. And it's basically the Lord wants a relationship with you. Mm-hmm. This is how it was broken and here's how he's trying to reestablish that with you. Now, he's already finished the work. All you have to do is accept it, receive it, and believe it, right? Amen. And so that's basically, and that repeats over and over and over in Scripture. And we are saved by His grace through our faith. That is it, right? That is it. That's that's the whole message. You know, Jesus is what restores our relationship to God, and you know, that's that's basically the message. Uh, the Bible is not about us. So it's it, it's less about us. I think it's more about how we keep rejecting God and the consequences of that than it is about us, you know, in a general sense. And it's more about God, you know. God is the protagonist. God is much like how Shakespeare and all these other famous writers would write themselves into the story. The Bible is God writing himself into the story of humanity, into the story of mankind. And so it's a beautiful thing to see and read and learn about how God didn't have to do any of that, you know, and how yeah. don't deserve it. And um, yeah, I was having a conversation with someone today who said, you know, uh, I was just pondering the question, like, what would I what would I ask God if I had the chance to stand face to face to him? And he said that it was an interesting thought to think that he would ask, am I good? You know, and I'm not sure if he meant, am I good? Like, did I make it, you know, or am I good? Like, am I a good person? 
And so yeah, that question is interesting because we we know from reading scripture that we're actually not good. So God would respond and say, no, you're not good. No one is good, right? Uh, only God is good, right? Or would he say, yes, you're good because now I see you through Jesus's life and death? Right. Well, well, that's, that was the next part of it. It's like, no, you're not good. There isn't anything you can do because you fall short of the glory of God, yeah. right? And because the wages of sin, you are condemned to eternal damnation. However, here's the good news. Jesus paid the price and you just have to believe that and accept it. Amen. So, yeah, one thing that I was because in my own life, I'm stressing about uh, just trying to find a job and the right job. And I honestly feel completely lost. And one thing that my husband, Matthew, said is, thank God that salvation isn't that way. like salvation does not depend on me being, you know, getting a certain job or getting a certain score on the test or doing really well on an interview or, or, or anything like that. Yeah. Salvation is given by the Lord and it is for, like the work has been done for yeah. us. And I think I think it's easy to fall into, you know, the thinking that there is there is something we can do right. uh, because it's easy to think, man, you know, I know I know I know we're all sinners. I know that God saved me by grace through faith, and all I can do is try. And so the moment that we involve ourselves in that process is, I think, the moment that we diminish the finished work of Christ. It means it's finished. It means there's nothing you can do. It, it isn't yeah. 95% God and 5% us, or 99% God and 1% us. No, it is 100% Jesus on the cross. That's yeah. it. Yeah. But something so, we fall in something we fall into, which we've mentioned just as Christians, is we think, okay, because it is finished, then we kinda I feel like we lean too heavily on that in the sense that, okay, I don't have to do anything anymore. Yeah. You know? Well but I it's, think that which is which is true. Like we don't do have to do anything to to be saved. Like we said, it's only through Jesus. Right. But it should produce in us a response of so much gratitude and so much love right. for God and so much love for his word. So I've been, you know, in our in our uh, group, I'm a little behind. We're in Psalms, but I'm in Psalm 119, which is the longest ever. This is the longest <laughs> chapter of the Psalms ever. And every time I know in the past, every time I've read it, it's just been difficult to keep track of. Um, and so I've kind of just taken my time. I've been reading it section by section. And uh, one of the beautiful things about it is just the, the psalmist is just delighting in the law of the Lord. Is just rejoicing in it. And it's sometimes, you know, we, we, we take the fact that we have the word of God for granted. Because how many people don't have the word of God, don't know about the word of God, or know about the word of God and can't legally have it with them. And the psalmist is just, no, I delight in his commandments. I delight in what God says. And it's like, how often do we do that? So we, so the, we too often were like, I'm saved. Okay, we're good. Let's move on with my, with my life. And we get focused on all the other things that life entails, right? Life, right. work, relationships and all that. And it's like, remember, it's about God. Yes, you're saved, but your life is about God. And then there is a, I, we were watching, I finished this chosen by the way which if you haven't you need to I anybody did. I did. who hasn't watched it but there's an episode where matthew says all you have to do today is serve god love god basically that's that's your one goal for today do that and everything else will fall into place kind of like put put the kingdom of god first um right. and that's that's all we need we need to Make sure, though, to put yeah. him first. Yeah, I think I think sometimes what we think as Christians is when we say we put God first or, or we submit to God is we need to bring God into as an addition to what is the rest of the stuff that's happening in our lives. And no, yeah. God needs to be your life because yeah. God doesn't revolve around your, your life. Your life revolves around God. And yeah. So yeah, so when we change that perspective and look at it in that way, then I think it it takes on a stronger meaning. Um, yeah. you know, there's a verse in John John 3:30 that says, you know, um I must 
uh, you must increase that I may decrease. And, mm -hmm. and I've heard it almost 99% of the time quoted. I used to do this myself. I used to quote it as, Lord, I want to decrease so that you may increase. And that's almost always how that verse is quoted, but that's backwards because God needs to fill our lives so that the Holy Spirit can get rid of all those impurities that are separating us from God, from all that sin. So anyways, yeah, that's what that just came to mind. Amen. But focusing back on the podcast, you know, um, just so we, I guess, end this four year anniversary episode, what, how do you feel about the podcast now versus how you felt in the beginning? I know in the beginning, there was some uncertainty, maybe you were nervous about being recorded or whatever the case, but how about versus now? Um, I mean, I feel excited about what God has done and will continue to do. Like, obviously, there's no, there's no nervous, nervousness. There's no nervousness anymore. Uh, I still get a little nervous when it comes to, you know, if you can't make the episode of recording by myself I'm like oh my gosh I don't know what what am I how can I talk for 30 minutes more often than not I know you know I end up you know the Holy Spirit just takes the wheel as he always does um but uh, I feel good I feel I'm I'm excited about what's to come and continuing yeah. to have this connection with you also is awesome being far away just having an opportunity I know it's not about me but uh, having an opportunity to talk with my brother and to talk with him about the most important thing that we can talk about, which is God. Yeah. And just so the listeners or viewers can understand a little bit, too, we can we can always have a conversation off of camera, off of mic or whatever. But I think we've conditioned ourselves not to because it almost always is a potential episode. Right. Right. Like we, we can just get on the phone and it, it's uh, talking about this, talking about um, I know that one thing we were going to mention, because I, th I think it needs mentioning is, you know, what's been going on recently. Right. Right. Uh, you know, there was an assassination attempt on the president just a few days ago. That I think. I think is a is a good way to measure kind of like where our country's at. Because right. if you look at everything that involves that, you know, we're not going to discuss whether, you know, we believe one side planned it or the other or this or that. I don't think that's necessary. Um, I think we can do our own research if we're doing it honestly and find out where we think that's leaning towards. But I mean, come on, you know, one problem that I see with what's happened just to, you know, keep the focus on Christ or lack thereof is that. People are, I'm seeing, quote unquote, Christians glorifying Trump now, idolizing Trump. And I think that that's a problem, right? Listen, can I be honest? Can I tell, yes. can I say something? Yeah, as soon as, as soon as I heard, which I know, I, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> as soon as I heard that there was a, you know, a In headshot, a basically, for Trump, my mind direct immediately went to Revelations, where it talks about that being a, getting a <laughs> fatal wound right, to the right, head, right. Um, and then surviving. And then so that's the first now, thing I tell I tell my husband, and then and then I'm like, that's immediately what I think of. And then I realize, okay, it hit his ear, so that's not what right, I right. was talking but about. But even but even if it hits it hits his right eye, what does that mean though? I mean, what do you mean? You, we would we would have to be three and a half years into the tribulation in order for that to happen. Right. Right. So, see, that didn't come to my mind because we'd, we'd have to believe that we were already in the tribulation for that to be a possibility. This is, this anti, is true. The Antichrist would have had to have been revealed. I mean, I, if anything, maybe it's a foreshadowing. Who knows? I've also learned to try not to... I don't know. I guess my mind doesn't go there anymore in terms of that, because I think at the beginning when I started studying eschatology, I was prone to sensationalizing or yeah. over spiritualizing things. And I'm not saying that that's what you're doing, but but um, the facts are there, you know, even if he would have gotten shot in the eye. OK, I mean, sad day for Trump and his family, but. 
not the end. I, there's people out there that do believe he's the Antichrist. Yeah, I've never, um, I've never thought that but, he was. But yeah, that's just, the, that's just the thought that came in in that yeah. second. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it's um, again, it's easy, and and there's so many people fighting over silly stuff like that, like, you know, you know, Trump's the Antichrist, he's not the Antichrist, or you know, the church will go through the tribulation, it will not. It's like, yeah. Man, yeah. seriously, I think I, mean, we, I think again we can talk about this for a long time, but you know the main thing is that listen, God is the one that appoints kings and removes mm-hmm. kings. That's not right. an excuse for us not to go and vote, right? Okay, I think that needs to be said. That's not an excuse for us to not go vote. Um, the other thing is, yes, God raises up kings and removes kings, but sometimes the kings are raised as a judgment against right. the land uh That's true. so again i i think well, i think i think we're living in a time where people are expecting things to go bad no matter who's president over the next few months and right. honestly the best solution is to dive into the word to get on your knees to ask jesus into your life to accept them as Lord and Savior if you haven't done so already. To seek him, right? Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom. Seek the Lord. Um, love the Lord, right? With all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. How do we do that? We we got to get to know him. How do we get to know him? By diving into his word. And I know that we all struggle with different aspects of, of you know, being disciples of Christ. But we also have each other. If we don't find somebody, right? Again, I find that in you. I find that in the group of people on on X, on Twitter. And and that's why I spend so much time in there. Because, you know, for example, shout out to Sean, by the way. I don't know if he'll listen. But, you know, Sean, he holds a space on there. And his uh, Twitter handle is Christ is coming and the number five. If any of you are listening out there and have a Twitter or don't have a Twitter, create one, join the space. It's wonderful. Um, He he's he does biblically sound teaching. He starts off by going the the first 30 minutes of every space he does is him sharing the gospel. Now, the gospel is simple. You know, you're a sinner. Right. We share that at the beginning. You're a sinner. You're not good enough. Uh, The wages of sin are death and therefore you're condemned to eternal damnation. However, the good news is that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, right? And he was buried as it was written in the scriptures on the third day he was risen, right? As it had been written hundreds of years prior. And one day he's coming back. And that's a gospel. Like we share it at the beginning of every episode. It's seconds. The gospel is seconds. He spends 30 minutes on the gospel and it's wonderful. And uh, there's a recording if you miss the, you know, the the space or whatever. But don't worry, the spaces usually go for five plus hours, okay? And so he goes through the gospel. Uh, then he may or may not read scripture. But he also, he spends about a good 15 minutes. He's got a list of prayer requests that people submit to him. And he's got a list of them. And he prays for every single person. It's like, at minimum, I think 15 minutes. He must pray for about, I don't know, 100 people every morning, every time he does a space. He does that. Then then, then he'll go into a, a scripture reading and or teaching. Uh, sometimes it's just reading. And, and sometimes we'll go through entire books just, just reading. No exposition, no talking about it, no commentary, just reading. And it's wonderful because different people go up and different people read different chapters. And and it's just wonderful because you're consuming the word of God constantly, one way or another. Then there's a pause and some people come up to worship, to sing. Other people just play songs and worship. And it's just, it's like, it's, it's the church. It's literally, it's the church happening 24 7 on twitter so um i'm very grateful that i found that um but uh but yeah and you've you know you've kind of spent some time in there too a few times so i'd like to see more of you there by the way okay Uh, thanks (laughs) 
Uh, but yeah. No, they're pretty cool. They're pretty cool. I've enjoyed the, them the times I've I've signed on. But back yeah. to the president almost yeah. assassination that I think. Yeah. Um, I mean, I something mean, he, like this hasn't he, happened in, in like 40 years, right? Since Reagan. Yeah. And it's a big deal. He, but he put a post. He said, um, you know, basically that it was, I mean, only God is the one who protected it. Like, really? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, Which, it's true. It's definitely true. I mean, again, you look at the specifics of everything. It's definitely true. God is the only reason that he's still mm-hmm. alive. For whatever reason, you know, it's not his time yet. Right. Right. And only God knows why it could be good or it could be bad. I I don't know. It could be a blessing or it could be a judgment. We don't know. Right. But but one thing one thing thing, we definitely have to do for sure is pray for our country. Yes. Pray pray for for our our leadership. Don't just pray for Trump. Pray for Biden. Pray Pray for Kamala or Kamala, however you say it. Right. Pray for the secretary of state defense pray pray for all these people pray for the all of the leadership um yeah. you know because politics is what's corrupted our government government is from god but politics is not it's just our interfering with god in a sense right. so you know pray for the leaders of the world and, and also um, pray for the um, well i mean honestly when i heard it was a twin like i i when I heard that the person that, you know, tried to kill him was 20 years old, I'm like, this kid, this was a kid. For me, that's like, I feel old now because I'm like, that's a kid. What is he doing? You know, and yeah. um, it's it's upsetting to to hear that, you know, hear kind of about his past and what he went through in high school and all that. But we need to love others. We yeah. need to love and- others as, as well as possible because we do not know what they're going through. Yeah, and, and we and I think we also need to um, offer a little bit more grace. I think it's a disservice, I think, to accuse the people that we disagree with of plotting, right? No matter right. what side you're on, uh, right. I think it's a it's a disservice. We can- I think at the very least, I would hope that maybe moving forward, they would be kinder to one another. That at the debate, they're not attacking one another, and they're just. Yeah, you know, I you don't, don't need to. You don't need to again. You don't need to spend your your time when you're speaking just bashing the other person. Just talk yeah, about the, what you want to do. And I think the the only way that we're gonna have that happen is if they come before the Lord. Right. Right. There's this. There's a lot of pride involved. On, yeah. On every side. So. Definitely. Uh, but but I do want to just encourage everybody to just pray for the leadership. Yeah, and then Good also pray. Collect. You can't end the episode without talking about the the man who died as well, um, in the crossfire. Right. right? You hear that That's he right. was he was excited to be there. He was with his family, and the first thing he does is throws them to the ground and is just over them. You know, just protecting them, and it's yeah. just uh, it. You just pray for that family, and uh, I mean, for me, it's just a reminder, of God's love for us. You know, we were yeah. we were facing the ultimate punishment and he's like, no, I'm going to take the hit for you. Yeah. And and I think all this this because it's still a tragedy. I think this is all just a result of, again, pointing fingers. I don't again, I don't think that's helpful, even in an argument, you know, with your spouse or whoever. It's not it's not it doesn't help to just point the finger. How about we just talk about the facts? Let's just talk right. about the facts. That's it. Talk about the facts and talk about how, you you know, you want to do things better. Tell us what that plan is. That's it. Right. That's all you got to do. Because if you're if you're genuinely if if the people are what's, you know, in your best interest, then or if you have the best interest for the people that you are representing, you know, the country that you want to represent, then that should be apparent. Right. And not just with words, but with you know, the follow-up actions that come after that. So I think, I think that's all we'll say on that for now. Um, I just think that again, we, we need to stay in prayer and seek the Lord, look at scripture because we need the truth in our lives. If we don't have Jesus in our lives, then we can be easily deceived. Right. So 
and let's pray for one another and encourage each other. I don't, I don't think we'll ever get tired of just repeating that because it's so important. Yeah. You know, everybody's going through some kind of struggle, right? Right. Right. And yeah. That's, that's huge. I think sometimes we focus so much on our own struggle. Everyone's going, a lot of people are going through a lot of things. Um, yeah. There's think sometimes, sometimes, sometimes like in the, in the recent past where I talked to someone I haven't talked to in a while and I'm like, I had no idea you were going through all this. Yeah. Um, and it's just, we need to reach out to our loved ones, check in to see how they're doing, pray for them. Yeah. Even when they act like nothing is going wrong because we all have stuff. Exactly. Imagine if, imagine if we all, you know, you know, had like a group of people that we always could go to. And and we all just always prayed for each other and encouraged each other. And we're just really like, really trying to serve one another, right? Because that's what Jesus taught, you know, right. s- to serve one another. And so anyways, uh, we could keep going. I mean, I definitely could. And I know I told you at the beginning that I was been a little discouraged and, you know, I had a hard time pushing myself to record this episode, but Praise God that I did because I feel a lot better. I feel mm-hmm. a lot better. And again, I can't explain it, but I feel better. And right. I can only thank God for that. So where could they find us? They can find us. I, we haven't done this in a while. Yeah. Christ Alone Podcast. See, I don't even know. Christ Alone. Now. Christ Alone Podcast.com work. <laughs> Both of them. All of our handles are Christ Alone Podcast, except for Twitter or X which is Christ Alone Pod, and our number is 407-296-2881. You can uh, call us, leave your, leave us your questions, suggestions, or prayer requests. However, the best way to get your prayer requests or talk to us is through our website at ChristAloneNetwork.com forward slash contact or ChristAloneNetwork.com forward slash prayer request. I'm sorry, prayer. Um, that will take you to our prayer request page. It also, if you want to submit your testimony to us, uh, you can go to ChristLoanNetwork.com forward slash testimony. And you can also, there's a link on there where you can also watch other people's testimonies. And you can see kind of how the format has been for those testimonies uh, so that you can submit it to us. And that's it. If you haven't done so, please go to Apple Podcasts and drop us a written review. Please, 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 and thank you. Now, when you do that, it also encourages us to see those uh, reviews. And, uh, you know, it's it's in a way, it's like you're coming into agreement with us as well. So we appreciate that in advance for those of you that haven't done it and for those of you that have also thank you. And also, we don't usually announce this on here, but it is available now. And if you want to support the podcast financially, you can do so at ChristAloneNetwork.com forward slash give. So if God puts it in your heart, amen. And uh, don't forget to share the podcast because it's free. Right? Amen. Amen. We love you guys. And if we don't see you next week, we'll see you in the clouds. 